Hey there guys, it's VPAT and welcome back again to another tutorial. For today's video, I'm going to discuss how to translate propositional symbols into its English form. Now, if you haven't watched my first video about introduction to propositions and my second video about propositional operators, make sure to watch it first and I'll be putting those links down in the description box. In our previous lesson, we know that we have two types of operators. First one would be unary and the second one would be binary. And under the unary, we have this negation symbol. While in binary, we have five different symbols which are conjunction, disjunction, implication, biconditional, and then exclusive or. So in expect ko guys na medyo familiar na tayo pagdating dito sa mga symbols na to at sa mga pangalan nila kasi kailangan natin yan in order to translate from symbolic form down to English form and vice versa, okay? So, huwag kayong mag-alala kasi meron naman tayong guides sa mga next slides. So, in here, eto na yung mga symbols natin. But, in order to translate muna from one form to another, kailangan muna natin malaman yung English form ng mga to. So, in here, sa negation natin, ang translation itong symbol na to would be not. Now, pagdating naman sa conjunction, we have end. While in disjunction naman, ang translation niya would be or. Tapos, sa implication natin na symbol, ay ang translation niya would be if at saka yung then. Now, when we say sa biconditional, this would be if and only if. Ito lang yung shortcut form niya, okay? Now, pag pumunta tayo sa exclusive or, ang translation niya would be either or but not both, okay? So, in here, sa mga examples natin, let P, Q, and R represent our propositional statements. Ibig sabihin lang nito, meron tayong 1, 2, 3 propositional variables or tatlong statements agad. So, for P, we have today is the start of my vacation. Then, for Q, we have I am studying for an exam. And for R, I am watching my favorite anime. Let's start agad-agad sa ating first example which is this one, okay? So, para lang makapag-translate tayo, kailangan lang natin malaman yung dalawang bagay. First is, we need to determine the propositional variable or propositional statement being used. And then, second would be to determine the propositional operator slash operators, okay? So, in this case, sa example natin, meron tayong isang propositional variable and that would be P. Ibig sabihin lang nito, etong sentence na to ang gagamitin natin. While, ang propositional operator niya would be this negation or yung translation natin would be not. Ang gagawin lang natin in order to translate this into its English form or sentence form ay i-combine natin tong dalawang nakuha natin. So, ibig sabihin, in-negate mo tong buong P na variable na to or ilalagay mo lang tong not dito sa sentence na to. Isisingit mo siya, parang ganon. So, ibig sabihin, Today is the start of my vacation. Kailangan natin ng not. That would be, today is not the start of my vacation. Okay? Ito yung not na symbol, which is para dito. Tapos, ito yung P, which is etong buong sentence na to. Okay? Now, let's try this second example. We have P and R. Again, guys, yung propositional variables natin dito would be dalawa. And that would be P at saka R. So, ibig sabihin, etong dalawa yung gagamitin. Now, kung mapapansin nyo, nasa gitna naman yung propositional operator. Ibig sabihin, sa gitna ng dalawang sentence na yan, doon natin isisingit. So, etong operator na to ay translated as end. Ibig sabihin lang, ang result nito would be this one. Today is the start of my vacation and I am watching my favorite anime. So, eto ay yung buong P. Tapos, ang end na to would be yung symbol na ganito. At ito naman, sentence na to would be R. So, in short, ito ay equal siya dito. Okay? Now, let's try this next example. So, again guys, meron tayong dalawang variables dito, which are P at saka yung Q naman. So, ibig sabihin, itong dalawang sentences ang gagamitin natin. But this time, ang pagkukombine natin na operator would be this one, or etong or naman. So, ibig sabihin lang nito, Today is the start of my vacation or I am studying for an exam. Okay? Ayan yon. Ito again yung P na sentence natin. Tapos etong or naman would be yung symbol na ganito 
At etong I am studying for an exam, iyan yung Q. So, ibig sabihin, eto ay equal lang dito. Okay? Now, let's try another example. Eto naman. So, again guys, meron tayong dalawang propositional variables, which are P and R. Eto yung gagamitin natin. Pero, kung mapapansin nyo, eto yung ating symbol, which yung translation niya ay if at saka din. So, mind you guys, kapag ganito yung translation natin, Yung if na to ay apply natin sa first variable, while yung then naman na to ay apply natin sa second variable. So, what do we mean by this one? Ibig sabihin, sa P na to ay apply natin sa umpisa yung if, tapos saka tayo magpropositin sa then, tapos ina-apply natin tong R na to. Bale, ang resulting lang yan would be, if today is the start of my vacation, then I am watching my favorite anime. Again guys, itong today is the start of my vacation would be yung P. Tapos since meron ka nga implication na symbol or eto, nasa unahan yung if. Okay? Tapos after nyan, magproproceed tayo dun sa then. Tapos tsaka mo pa nang ilalagay yung next propositional variable which is R. Ayan yung translation na buo. Okay? If again nasa unahan, tapos magproproceed tayo sa then. Tapos yung second variable. Okay? Now, let's try this next example. Ito naman siya, guys. So, ito, medyo mahaba na siya. Again, guys, dalawa yung variables natin, which are P at saka yung Q. This time, kung mapapansin nyo, may dalawa tayong operators. And that would be etong end at saka yung isa naman would be yung not. So, dito muna tayo mag-start. Sabi dito sa P ay kukuhanin mo lang siya as is. So, ang mangyari is, today is the start of my vacation. Tapos, kung proceed tayo dito sa operator na to, yung end. So, ibig sabihin, today is the start of my vacation and since etong isang propositional operator na to ay malapit sa Q, ibig sabihin lang nito ay in-negate natin itong buong Q. Okay? Ibig sabihin, etong operator ay ina-apply lang dito, hindi dito. Okay? Huwag kayo malilito doon. Kasi nga, sabi natin sa umpisa, ang negation operator, ang natatanging operator na unary or na-apply lang sa isa, which is para sa Q yun. So, kapag pinag-combine natin itong buong yan, that would be, today is the start of my vacation, P yun, and, which is yung symbol na ganito, I am not studying for an exam. Yung I am studying for an exam, that would be Q. Nilagyan natin ng not, that would be not Q. Again guys, etong mga symbols na yan, ay equivalent dito sa symbols na to. Okay? So, I hope medyo malinaw yung pagkaka-explain dito. Kahit medyo magulo talaga yung example dyan, dahil first time mo palang malearn yan. Now, let's try this next example. We have here Q, X, or R. Ngayon, guys, dalawa ulit yung propositional variables natin, which is etong dalawa. Ibig sabihin, eto lang dalawa yung kailangan natin gamitin. Now, mind you guys, meron tayong exclusive or dito na operator. Ibig sabihin, etong either or yung gagamitin natin na translation. So, katulad sa kanina sa implication symbol natin, ganun din yung pag apply na exclusive or. Ang gagawin lang natin is sa first variable, lalagay mo yung either. Tapos, sa second variable naman, lalagay mo yung or. So, paano yon? So, ang mangyayari lang would be yung sa Q. Either I am studying for an exam, eto yon tsaka eto yun, or I am watching my favorite anime but not both. So again guys, yung either ay siningit mo dun sa Q, eto yung Q, tapos yung next naman, yung or, ay siningit mo dun sa R, okay? Now mind you guys, etong but not both ay kailangan din yan i-include. Bakit? Kasi kung napanood nyo dun sa true tables natin, yung exclusive or dun ay pinipili lang natin yung isang true. Ibig sabihin, Isa lang sa kanila ang pipiliin mo at hindi pwedeng dalawa, okay? So, make sure talaga na napanood nyo yung video na yon bago kayo mag-proceed here para na mas na sa talaga yung logic natin sa mga sentences na to. Now, let's try this next example. We have here R implies P. Again, guys, parehas lang nung kanina, iniba lang natin yung variable. Ibig sabihin, dalawang variables ang ginamit natin, etong dalawa. At ang gagamitin natin ng translation would be yung if and then. Now guys, mind you again, ito yung nasa umpisa at ito naman yung nasa pangalawang variable. Ibig sabihin, ang ating result lang dito would be 
if I am watching my favorite anime, then today is the start of my vacation. Itong if, nasa umpisa ng R, ito yung buong R natin, which is this one, di ba? Ito yon. Tapos, yung then naman ay siningit mo dun sa letter P, which is ito yung buong letter P. Okay? Now, for our last example, we have this. Ito, medyo mahaba ulit siya. At kung mapapansin nyo, Q at saka R na naman yung gagamitin natin. But this time around, meron tayong dalawang operators ulit. So, again guys, etong not is a unary operator. Ibig sabihin, applicable lang siya sa isang variable. Ibig sabihin lang nito ay ito ay magkakombine. Ibig sabihin, yung Q natin na to ay inenegate mo or lalagyan mo lang ng not. Ang mangyayaring result dyan would be, I am not studying for an exam. Okay? Tapos, kung mapapansin nyo, meron tayong isang operator ulit. This time, implies naman siya or ito yung if. Ibig sabihin lang nito, Bago itong buong tong operator na yan, ito, lalagyan mo siya ng if sa umpisa. Okay? Tapos, after nyan, lalagyan mo siya ng then, tsaka ka lang magproproceed dito sa R na to. So, in short, ang example natin na dyan ay magre-result na if I am not studying for an exam, then I am watching my favorite anime. Again, guys, itong I am not studying for an exam, symbolizes not Q. Tapos, yung if and then naman na to, symbolizes itong symbol. Tapos, yung I am watching my favorite anime, symbolizes yung R. Okay? Ibig sabihin, kailangan lagi na una itong operator na to bago yung not. Okay? Kasi yun yung nagkocombine sa kanilang dalawa. Okay? So, guys, signal natin if nagigets nyo ba talaga yung lesson or naiintindihan nyo. So, I want you to grab your own pen and paper or any scratch paper, tapos sagutan natin tong short assessment na to. Again guys, meron tayong same na given, which are P, Q, and R na mga propositional statements, at eto yung mga guide natin, tapos meron tayong mga questions na not P implies not R, which is etong number 1. Next question would be not R implies Q, and then our last question would be R by conditional P. Again guys, please try to translate this para makita nyo rin if nagets gets nyo ba yung lesson na to. But if hindi nyo pa masyado magets, you can always replay this video and go on with your own pacing. Okay? So that's it for today guys. Thanks for watching and please do like and subscribe to my channel. Bye!